She was murdered on the 8th of May in Kailicha. She was stabbed 100 meters from where six other people were shot five minutes earlier. No one followed up that case. We did, because her sister asked us to help. Do you know where we found the suspect? In the Eastern Cape. We brought him back. He is now being detained in Kailicha. We do that because we care for the community. We patrol for them. We give them training. I don't see you doing the same, sir. And I'm tired of the excuses, and I'm tired of you making this a political thing. None of these people tonight, when they see their neighbors being slaughtered on the streets, worry about your nonsense comments about the Constitution and about devolution. They worry about surviving, sir. And I would like to end off with this. I want to graciously invite you to come and patrol without a bodyguard, without a grand car, in normal clothes, with this community tonight, to get the sewage on your shoes that they patrol through. You have a problem, Mr. Minister, because you are removed from reality that the rest of us face. When I visit Mbukweni, I get out of my car and a three-year-old little boy is taking a poo next to the road because he doesn't have a toilet. And you know what? Police don't care if something happens to them there because they don't have the resources to help. When I go to the different gender-based violence tests at these police stations, especially in the Nyanga cluster or traditional Nyanga cluster, the majority of the te detectives have more than 300 dockets on their table. 300 dockets! How do you think you can do an investigation with 300 dockets? It's impossible. And then, the cherry on top, and this is my conclusion, is that many of those detectives have 300 dockets, and it's a constable detective. He just came out of the college. He doesn't even know how, how to spell J88. You expect him to solve the problem. I recently spoke with Ian Cameron of Action Society following the outburst from Minister Becky Hele. We discussed the potential for devolving police functions away from the national government down to the provincial and local level as a potential solution to the current crime crisis. So Ian, let's talk now about solutions to this problem. What about the devolution of policing functions? Because if national SAPS is unable to meet this crime challenge head on, then we need to be looking at alternatives. How do you see this potential for spreading policing powers down to the provincial and local level? Could that be an alternative? It certainly is an alternative. Um, we've, we've really come forward in the West, Western Cape, especially saying that it should be tested there. And the reason for it is simple. Um, uh, specifically in the Western Cape, having some of the most dangerous precincts in the country, where SAPS has been the most ill-resourced in the country compared to other regions, uh, it really does seem like devolution is a, an important option. Now, it's interesting because when we listened to Taylor's response the other day in, in Guguletu, he was saying that SAPS is the only uh, constitutionally mandated body, but he fails to mention that SAPS and he himself is, is failing their own constitutional mandate when it comes to safeguarding people. So why not consider devolution? Why not consider uh, uh, changing the levels or rather the authority that uh, different uh, governments, whether local, provincial or national, might have over law enforcement. Why not devolve if it was really about the safety of people? Because to me, it seems like it's a political statement. It's about political control and it's about centralizing power instead of seeing how we can really safeguard and collaborate across all different levels of law enforcement to ensure that we safeguard these very dangerous areas like relate to Kailicha, Mitchell's Plain, etc. Yeah, I think the irony is that as state capacity starts to collapse, the desire for centralization and control actually strengthens. But meanwhile, there's this force uh, pulling power out and, and, and down. Uh, but now, aren't you encouraged by the efforts of the Western Cape provincial government and the city of Cape Town? Uh, the LEAP program has been initiated, still early stages there, but you know, starting to take back some of these powers uh, from national government. Yeah, I think it's a very positive step. Um, I think it's crucial that they are supported in doing that. 
I think something to add would be to, to further improve auxiliary capacity, in other words, reservists uh, under Metro Police and Provincial Police to really give statutory and, and well-trained, uh, rather say statutory power to the community and to also train the community well. And obviously you go through the necessary vetting processes, but it can really be a positive addition to law enforcement. And it's a very cheap way or far cheaper way than just to keep on adding official bodies. So you literally have auxiliary units, people that have a compulsory amount of hours they need to work per, per month in order to stay uh, uh, you know, uh, compliant. And, uh, and then you're really putting law enforcement in the hands of the community in a, in a legal way and in an orderly way. And by doing that, we can start filling the void that SAPS has left because they haven't replaced the more than 60,000 reservists that have been lost over the last decade. And obviously, that's taken a huge chunk out of visible uh, uh, policing and, and other crime combating forums throughout the country. And Ian, what can individuals do to safeguard their rights to protect themselves and their families? I think it's crucial that that communities get involved in all kinds of patrols. Yesterday, we offered in Google Lake to also, or not yesterday, last week, we, we offered to, to, uh, uh, to offer more training uh, to communities. We've done so in many other areas throughout the, uh, the Cape Flats, uh, but also nationally, we've started with that. And the idea is just to empower communities. We really need to make sure that communities know what they can and can't do. But to start with, get involved in your local neighborhood watch, get in, involved with your community policing forum and make sure that you're not on the sideline. I think that's the, the most important step. And once that's done, everything will start developing from there. The name of your organization is Action Society. And I think that perfectly encapsulates uh, the spirits uh, with which you try to uh, to engage your work. Uh, people need to, to take action to protect themselves. Ian Cameron, thank you very much. Let's hand over to you, our audience. Do you think that devolving police functions could be an alternative way of dealing with the crime crisis? Leave your thoughts down in the comments section below. Also, if you enjoyed this analysis, you might want to check out this video over here. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. My name is David Ansara. Until next time, take care.